Hola a todos, soy Mike. En este video les traigo la guía definitiva para aprender a conjugar todos los verbos regulares en español. Hi everybody, this is Mike. In this video, I bring you the ultimate guide to learn how to conjugate all the regular verbs in Spanish. Regular verbs in Spanish are mm, kind of difficult, pretty much all of the verbs, because of the conjugations. Um, in English, it's quite easy. Uh, that's one of the things that I liked when I started learning English. Um, and this was the, the, the ease to uh, conjugate the verbs, because basically verbs won't change when conjugating. I mean, won't change uh, um, according to the, to the subject. In Spanish, they do. And that's what makes it uh, difficult for non-native speakers to start mastering the, the verb conjugation. So, let's start by thinking about uh, the verbs. When we talk about the verbs, uh, we mean uh, verbs are words that we use in order to um, make reference to actions. When we want to talk about actions, we use verbs. And in English, we can find verbs in three different ways. Infinitive form, which is to play, to go, to walk, to run, and so on. We have the base form, which is the same infinitive form without the to, meaning to play would be play, to go would be go, to walk, walk, to run, run, and so on. And of course, we have uh, the conjugated form, which would be playing, worked, uh, um, walks, things like, things like that. So we have three different ways in English. In Spanish, we only have two. We have the infinitive form, which would be uh, either way, the, the to play, to go, and uh, the base form in English. And we have the conjugated form. The, the verbs in the, in the infinitive form, we know it's a verb in infinitive form because it ends in ar, er, ir. Let's say, to eat, comer. To walk, caminar. Uh, to lie, to, to, to live, vivir. So, ar, er, ir. Words ending in ar, er, ir are verbos, uh, are verbs. <laughs> I'm sorry. Right. Um, <laughs> I'm switching back and forth, Spanish and, and English. Uh, are verbs um, in Spanish. So, and, and, and they are uh, words that we use to make reference to actions. So, uh, when it comes to Spanish and verbs in the infinitive form, we have the root of the verb and the words ar, er, ir, jugar, comer, uh, saltar, uh, caminar, and so on. So, uh, when we are conjugating the, the, the verbs according to the, to the subjects, the, the ending, uh, we, we change the ending ar, er, ir, and we put some other thing according to the tense and the subject. And that's what we are going to learn today. We're going to know, we're going to learn about how to conjugate the verbs, but the regular verbs. And why regular verbs? In fact, why do we call those verbs regular verbs? We call uh, those verbs regular verbs because they follow rules. Then, irregular verbs won't follow the rules. Let's say in English. In English, if, if, uh, um, if we talk about regular verbs, we know that in the past form and the past participle form, we can just um, add the ed. Play, played. Smile, smiled. Uh, work, worked. Um, visit, visited. And that's the rule. So those are regular verbs. But if they won't follow the rule, we need to learn those basically by heart, by, by using them a lot. So like um, break, broke, broken. A speak, spoke, spoken. So all oh, those are similar. I can group the, the verbs. And then we need to learn those. But for regular verbs, we learn the rules. So that's basically what we are doing, going to do in this video. In this video, I'm going to show you the rules, the secrets in order to uh, properly conjugate regular verbs in present, past, and future, uh, also progressive and uh, the uh, past participle for perfect tenses. I think that's going to be it. Yeah, we're going to uh, cover 
all the possible uh, oh and conditionals and conditionals so we're going to to learn how to do that properly with the uh, regular verbs and i'm going to give you some clues and hints and tips in order to learn how to uh, conjugate also the irregular verbs so let's start okay so for the simple present tense para el presente simple uh, as we use, as you can see we do have a table here in which we have different combinations depending on the verb so if we have uh, the infinitive form ending in ar we do have these uh, conjugations for each one of the subjects same thing for regular verbs ending in er in its infinitive form we have these combinations for the the regular verbs depending on the subject and also for uh, regular verbs ending in ir in its infinitive form we do have these uh, conjugations depending on the subject so let's start with an example the verb nadar nadar it's a regular verb that ends in ar in its infinitive form so we have um the root in red you can see the root in red and the r part is the part that it's going to change that is going to be changed uh depending on the subject for these uh endings here so let's say we let's start with nadar to swim i swim yo nado you swim tu nadas informal usted nada formal Ustedes nadan for plural and vosotros nadáis if we were in Spain. I'm I'm uh, writing here just the verb conjugation without the subject. Just for you to know that in Spanish we we can do that. And the reason why is because uh, I already told um, the conjugation of the verb pretty much tells what uh, is the subject related to that and also by context but mostly because of the conjugation nado yo nadas tú nada usted nadan uh, ustedes or ellos so we have here he swims el nada she swims ella nada it swims nada we swim nosotros nadamos they swim ellos nadan and what we have done is we have followed the uh, conjugation based on the infinitive form nadar now let's move to correr so that would be the second column and we have i run yo corro see how we change uh, we keep the the root and we change uh, the er part the er the er uh, you run tu corres informal usted corre that would be formal ustedes corren for the plural and vosotros corréis if we were living in spain we also have el corre for he runs ella corre for she runs corre for it runs remember in spanish we can skip the subject and for it we never never mention a subject uh, we run, nosotros corremos, they run, ellos corren. Corren, ellos corren. And then we move to the third column. So, vivir, verbs, um, regular verbs ending in ir, uh, when we have the infinitive form. So, I have, I live, yo vivo. You live, tu vives. Which would be informal. Usted vive, formal. Ustedes viven, plural, and vosotros vivís, if we were in Spain. He lives, él vive. She lives, ella vive. It lives, vive. We live, nosotros vivimos. They live, ellos viven. And we have learned how to conjugate every regular verb in Spanish, uh, simple present tense, depending on the, the uh, infinitive form regular verbs ending in ar when infinitive form regular verb uh, re regular verbs ending in er and regular verbs ending in ir 
and for each one of those uh, conjugations based on the subject. The same idea, the same, con the same concept applies to the simple past. Remember that in Spanish we do have two different forms for the simple past. The first one is uh, what we call pretérito indefinido. We use this when talking about um, things that happened and that was it. It happened. Simple past. The other form that we have for the simple past is something that we call pretérito imperfecto. And that's when we uh, talk about things that used to happen, that would happen frequently, or when we are uh, telling a story, right? So we have those two different simple pasts. And for, this, for the first one, which is uh, pretérito indefinido, we have also for every single uh, regular verb, if the verb uh, if the infinitive form ends in ar, ar er ir, which would be infinitive, if it's ar, we have this set of combinations, of conjugations, the first column. If the verb ends in er, we do have the second column. And if the verb ends in ir, we have the third column. So, let's, do with, let's go with the example. So, we have nadar, which would be the first column. We have I swam, yo nadé. You swam, tú nadaste. For uh, informal. Usted nadó. For informal. Ustedes nadaron. For plural. Vosotros nadasteis. If we were in Spain. And we have he swam, el nadó. She swam, ella nadó. It swam, nadó. We swam, nosotros nadamos. And they swam, ellos nadaron. Here I would like to point out that, as you can see, we swam, it's simple past for we, a regular verb um, that in its uh, infinitive form ends in ar. For the conjugation for we, it sounds exactly like the, com the conjugation that we use for the simple present. So we, if we say... Uh, to um, we swim every day. I, I mean, we swim every day. I'm saying in simple present. Nosotros nadamos. We swim every day. Nosotros nadamos todos los días. We swim every day. Nosotros nadamos todos los días. But if we say the past, we swam yesterday. We also say nosotros nadamos ayer. So the conjugation is the same. One of the subtleties of Spanish. So let's go to correr, um, regular verb ending in er, er uh, which would be the simple past. So uh, the simple past when we want to talk about things that happened, pretérito indefinido. So we have correr, to run. I ran, yo corrí. We go with the second column. Uh, you ran, tú corriste, informal. Usted corrió, formal. Ustedes corrieron, plural. Vosotros corristeis, if we were living in Spain. We also have he ran, el corrió. She ran, ella corrió. It ran, corrió. Remember that uh, we in Spanish we skip the subject, but especially for it, we never mention a subject for it. We don't have a pronoun, a right pronoun that we mm, use uh, in sentences for it. We just skipped skip the, the 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 pronoun we ran nosotros corrimos they ran ellos corrían and then we move to the third column for vivir verbs uh, regular verbs ending in ir in their um infinitive form so i have i lived yo viví you lived tu viviste for um formal i mean informal Usted vivió, uh, formal. Ustedes vivieron, plural. And vosotros vivisteis, if we were in Spain. We have, he lived, el vivió. She lived, ella vivió. It lived, vivió. We lived, nosotros vivimos. And they lived, ellos vivieron. So, two things here to keep in mind. First, here happens exactly the same that happens 
when it comes to uh, regular verbs ending in ar, nadar, meaning that for we, it's the same conjugation as, as the simple present. So I can say, we live in Colombia, present, simple present. Nosotros vivimos en Colombia. And we can say, uh, we lived in Colombia, and it sounds the same. Nosotros vivimos en Colombia. Because uh, we can make the difference by context. So that that's one thing. And the other thing is that in Spanish, native speakers make this mistake a lot on a regular basis. When we have to say, tu viviste, people, native speakers, uh, usually say, tu viviste, tu comiste, tu saliste. That's a mistake. That's bad Spanish. It happens. But just for you to know, perhaps you are going to hear that. And you're going to say, what's happening here? And it's bad Spanish. So the right conjugation is, iste, tu viviste. Okay, and now we have learned uh, the conjugations for regular verbs in Spanish, depending on, on the, the, um, the ending, uh, when they are uh, infinitive form, ar, er, ir, for the simple past, pretérito indefinido, things that happened, and for a simple present. We do have now the rules of conjugation for those tenses. Now let's move to the simple past, pretérito imperfecto, for things that used to happen, things that would happen on a regular basis, or when we are telling a story, narrating something. And we have the three columns, regular verbs, on their infinitive form, ending in ar, er, ir, and for each one we have uh, the, the, um, the right conjugation for every subject. So we have nadar, the first column, nadar. I swam, yo nadaba. When I say I would swim every day back in the days, yo nadaba. You swam, tu nadabas, informal. Usted nadaba, formal. Ustedes nadaban, plural. Vosotros nadabais, if we were in Spain. Remember, we can skip the, the, the subject and we just uh, can say nadaba, nadabas, nadaba, nadaban, and so on. He swam, él nadaba. She swam, ella nadaba. It swam, nadaba. We swam, nosotros nadábamos. They swam, ellos nadaban. And we have covered the first column for regular verbs ending in ar, when they are in their infinitive form. Now let's move to the second column for the simple past. And we, we, and we have, I ran, yo corría. You ran, tu corrías, uh, informal. Usted corría, formal. Ustedes corrían, plural. Vosotros corríais, if we were in Spain. And we have, él corría, for he ran. Ella corría, for she ran. Uh, corría, for it ran. Nosotros corríamos for we ran, and ellos corrían for they ran. And we move finally to the third column when we, uh, where we have verbs ending in ir, when they are in their infinitive form. Regular verbs, remember. So we have I lived, yo vivía. You lived, tú vivías, informal. Usted vivía, formal. Ustedes vivían, plural. And vosotros vivíais if we were in Spain. And we have he lived, él vivía. She lived, ella vivía. It lived, vivía. And we lived, nosotros vivíamos. They lived, ellos vivían. So now we move to the simple future. The simple future and we have the same idea. Different columns depending on the regular verb um, in their infinitive form, if they end in ar, er, ir. And conjugations for each one of the subjects. So, we have in the first column for nadar, in the future form, I will swim, yo nadaré. You will swim, tú nadarás. Informal. Usted nadará. Formal. 
ustedes nadarán, plural, vosotros nadaráis, if we were in Spain. We have, he will swim, él nadará, she will swim, ella nadará, it will swim, nadará, we will swim, nosotros nadaremos, and they will swim, ellos nadarán. Now we move to verbs of the second column ending in e and in er, er, for their infinitive form, regular verbs. We have, uh, for the example, correr, to run, I will run, yo correré. You will run, tú correrás, informal. Usted correrá, regular. I mean, uh, formal. Uh, ustedes correrán, for the plural. Vosotros correréis, if we were in Spain. And we have, he will run, el correrá. She will run, ella correrá. It will run, correrá. We will run, nosotros correremos. They will run, ellos correrán. And... Last but now not least, we have the third column for regular verbs and in I, R, ir, uh, regular verbs in their infinitive form. And we have vivir, to live. I will live, yo viviré. You will live, tú vivirás, informal. Usted vivirá, formal. Ustedes vivirán, plural. Vosotros viviréis if you are in Spain. And we have, he will live, el vivirá. She will live, ella vivirá. It will live, vivirá. We will live, nosotros viviremos. They will live, ellos vivirán. O ellas vivirán. Remember, we have they, it can be translated as ellos o ellas. Uh, male, female. So we have learned the, the uh, rules for conjugating verbs, regular verbs in Spanish. Uh, depending on if if they if they are uh, if they are in their infinitive form and in ar er ir, regular verbs in Spanish, the conjugations for simple present, two conjugations for the simple past, and the conjugation for the simple future. Now let's move to easy conjugations. When we talk about progressive tenses, ing, I am running, you were playing, he will be talking. Um, progressive tenses. The gerund in Spanish, el gerundio. We just change the 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 end part of the verb. We keep the 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 root of the verb, and if the verb in in its infinitive form ends in ar, we change ar for e ando. And if the verb, the regular verb, in its infinitive form ends in Er ir, we change er ir for yendo. And that's it for all of the subjects. That's easy. So if we have nadar, we have nadando. I am swimming. Yo estoy nadando. Estoy nadando. If we have comer, we say comiendo. You are eating. You were eating. You will be eating. You have been eating. Estás comiendo. And different uh, conjugations. But let's focus on the progressive, the gerund. Endo, ando, endo. Uh, vivir ends in I, R, ir. So we change for endo, viviendo. You see, the, the root remains. He's living. Él está viviendo, está viviendo. And we also have the perfect tenses, the past participle. And one important thing here to understand and to know, we do have regular verbs, behave being the, as regular verbs but some of those regular verbs when it comes to uh, the perfect tenses they behave irregular so I'm leaving here a list of 700 plus regular verbs in Spanish and I've left red um, uh, colored uh, verbs for those who are regular verbs but in their in their uh, perfect tense form they behave irregularly so let's check for um, regular verbs past participle uh, perfect tenses what we do is we change the 
ar and er ir part for ado and id, according to this, if they behave as regular verbs. Remember, there are a few ones that behave as irregular, and that's on the list. I'm, I'm going to give you, uh, I'm going to leave in the description the link to uh, a PDF that you can download. I do have um, another channel in, in uh, on YouTube. I do have another channel which is uh, Inglés Fácil con Mike. That's the channel that I that I that I uh, I've been running for almost five years now, in which I uh, teach English to Spanish speakers. And I do have a website uh, www.miguelpenilla.com in which I teach Spanish to I mean English to uh, Spanish speakers. But I'm going to leave, uh, uh, I'm going to create a, a, a special uh, a link there so you can download this uh, document on PDF for your, your um, for you to be able to use it uh, uh, while studying. So, uh, for regular verbs, for all of the regular verbs that behave as regular verbs, always for the past participle form or the uh, perfect tense, we do this. We change the ar for ado and the er ir for ido. So if we have nadar, we use nadado. I have swum. Yo he nadado. Comer comido. You have eaten. Tu has comido. Vivir vivido. He has lived. El ha vivido. And as you may have noticed, some irregular verbs in English are not irregular in Spanish. It's different. The rules are different. So um, let's move to a little part here in which I want to show you some irregular verbs. And same as in English, you can uh, group them in order to study them. So we have irregular verbs that we can group because when they are um, in their uh, perfect form, the past participle form, they change in to, they end in to, I'm sorry, they end in, in to. So we have to open, abrir, abierto. Abierto. We don't say abrir, we say abierto. And it's because that's irregular uh, when it comes to the uh, past participle. To cover, cubrir, cubierto. To write, escribir, escrito. To die, morir, muerto. To put, poner, puesto. To break, romper, roto. To see, ver, visto. To come back, volver, vuelto. So as you can see, we all of those end in to, pretty much. There is no rule. In fact, there is no rule. But you can group them in order to study them. Uh, some of them... And in cho, irregular verbs, when when you um, conjugate them as uh, past participle or perfect tenses. To say, decir, dicho. To make or to do, hacer, hecho. To satisfy, satisfacer, satisfecho. Cho, dicho, hecho, satisfecho. And we have some compounds verbs. So if we have the Poner, you see, if we have the poner, 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 puesto, poner, 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 all those verbs are formed with the poner, they, they have that, that part of the word, descomponer, descompuesto, disponer, dispuesto, exponer, expuesto, imponer, impuesto, indisponer, indispuesto, interponer, interpuesto. Oponer, opuesto. Posponer, pospuesto. Presuponer, presupuesto. Reponer, repuesto. Sobreponer, sobrepuesto. And transponer, transpuesto. Same thing happens with hacer, hecho. Deshacer, deshecho. And volver, vuelto. Devolver, devuelto. Envolver, envuelto. Revolver, revuelto. Decir dicho, contradecir, contradicho, predecir, predicho. Cubrir, cubierto. Descubrir, descubierto. Encubrir, encubierto. So that for you to keep in mind. Now let's move to conditional forms. Conditional forms. 
In English, we use the modal verb would plus the base form of the verb. Would go, would play, would, would talk, would teach, would learn, would study, and so on. In Spanish, it's kind of easy. Kind of easy. Because we are not going to change anything on the verb. We just leave the verb as it is. In its um, uh, infinitive form, ar, er, ir. What we do is that we add something else at the end of the verb, depending on the subject and based on this table. So, we have nadar. I would swim. Yo nadaría. You would swim. Tú nadarías. Informal. Usted nadaría. Formal. Ustedes nadarían. Plural. Vosotros nadaríais if we were living in Spain. He would swim. El nadaría. She would swim. Ella nadaría. It would swim. Nadaría. We would swim. Nosotros nadaríamos. They would swim. Ellos nadarían. Same thing with correr. Same thing. Nothing changes but uh, placing that extra uh, thing at the end. I would run. Yo correría. You would run. Tú correrías. Informal. Usted correría. Formal. Ustedes correrían. Plural. Vosotros correríais if we were living in Spain. We have he would run, el correría. She would run, ella correría. It would run, correría. We would run, nosotros correríamos. They would run, ellos correrían. And we have uh, conjugations for ir, vivir. And it's the same. It's the same. Same rule. I would live, yo viviría. You would live, tú vivirías informal. Usted viviría formal. Ustedes vivirían plural. Vosotros viviríais if we were living in Spain. He would live, él viviría. She would live, ella viviría. It would live, viviría. We would live, nosotros viviríamos. They would live, ellos vivirían. And we have learn how to uh, conjugate the uh, conditional form. Now, we do have irregular verbs when it comes to conditional forms. That's it. Complicated? A little bit, yeah, but we can learn it. So, we do have uh, these um, five verbs in which we add dria to the root. So, we have Poner, salir, tener, valer, venir. The root is pon, sal, ten, val, ven. Because the ar, er, ir, it's the infinitive form. So if it's poner, we don't say ponería. In this case, we, we cannot follow this. We cannot follow this. Because these verbs are, 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 are irregular. So you need to learn them. You need to memorize them, the, the verbs either by studying them, by, um, I don't know, different, different ways in order to uh, be able to learn these verbs. So, poner, pondría. Salir, saldría. Tener, tendría. Valer, valdría. Venir, vendría. As you can see, we use the root plus dría. Some other verbs, irregular verbs, we cannot do that. In this case, caber, haber, poder, querer, saber, we use the root, and we don't say dría, but ría. Caber, cabría. Haber, habría. Poder, podría. Querer, querría. Saber, sabría. And we have two more verbs in which we need to change the whole thing. Decir, diría. Totally different. Basically, the first letter. Hacer, haría, basically the two first letters. And we have learned how to conjugate the regular verbs in different tenses, the basic tenses. So now you know how to conjugate verbs. So, what's the idea? I'm going to leave you, I'm going to leave the, the, um, the link for this document so you can download it from my website. And we have 700 verbs, regular verbs. The ones in red are 
regular verbs that uh, you cannot uh, use the conjugation rules for the, um, the perfect tenses or the past participle. But we have learned uh, the irregular verbs for those conjugations. So you're covered. So what's the idea? The idea is for you to take one of these verbs. I mean, it would be perfect if you use all of them. 700 plus verbs to practice and to learn. So let's say we're going to use um, dibujar, dibujar, this verb, dibujar, to draw, dibujar. And if I'm going to uh, practice the conjugation, let's say I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, use the conditional form, dibujar. So I know that I need to add ia like this. I say, yo dibujaría. Tú dibujarías, él dibujaría, ella dibujaría, usted dibujaría, nosotros dibujaríamos, ellos dibujarían, ustedes dibujarían, vosotros dibujaríais. And that was it. I already have conjugated the verb. Let's say, uh, no, I want to use the, the future, the simple future. I need to follow this. Dibujar. I need to follow the first uh, column. So I go with yo um, dibujaré, tú dibujarás, él dibujará, ella dibujará, usted dibujará, nosotros dibujaremos, ellos dibujarán, ustedes dibujarán, vosotros dibujaréis. dibujaréis. So we, with that, we have the tools in order to practice with 700 plus regular verbs in Spanish. So let's play. Now, you might say, oh, Mike, 700 plus verbs? Come on, give me a break. That's too much. Well, yes and no. Yes, because, yeah, 700 verbs, that's a lot. That's a lot to do. But no, because if you want to learn, you need to use and expand your vocabulary. But let's say, yeah, okay, I'm going to give you a break. Now, it's too much. At the end of the list, I have left 100 plus regular verbs. I mean, 100 plus verbs, the most used verbs in Spanish. And the thing is that we have regular and irregular verbs. Regular verbs in, in green, all the green verbs are regular verbs, and the, re the verbs in, blacks, in black are irregular. So you can use, let's say, um, escribir escribir, or let's say existir, existir, and you can use that verb and uh, go ahead and practice, existir, so let's say we're going to uh, use the uh, simple past uh, for pretérito imperfecto, existir, so I know um, it's here, so yo existía, tú existías, él existía, ella existía, here you see, Nosotros existíamos, ellos existían, ustedes existían, vosotros existíais. So, we do have a lot, a lot ahead of us. If you want to become proficient um, in Spanish, you need to understand to get a grasp on how to conjugate the verbs. It is complicated, but it's not impossible. And right here, I'm giving you the tools in order to do so. So, uh, your, your mission, should you choose to accept it, is to start conjugating verbs. I gave you the list. You can download the PDF. I'm going to uh, leave the link uh, in the description. So, you can go ahead and start practicing. Please start practicing. Because uh, once I... Uh, today is uh, Saturday. June the 24th, 2023. So far, as of today, uh, I'm not able to uh, do live classes yet. But I, I'm, I'm going to be able to do that shortly, in a, in a matter of maybe a week or so, from this date on. And I think the, the, the first live classes that I'm going to go with are going to be examples of conjugating these verbs samples of how to conjugate based on these, these, these uh, rules. So we're going to practice a lot. So I need you to 
practice a lot too, to study a lot. So go ahead and, and do this. Um, you have a lot to do. As I told you, I gave you a lot of verbs and the tools in order to conjugate them. So uh, good luck with this. Okay, so remember, uh, we, we have um, covered all of the tenses with all of the subjects, uh, possible combinations for regular verbs and some ideas for the irregular verbs. So remember, you need to, to, to basically start working on that. Uh, the idea is for you to, to get used to this uh, conjugation rules, mm, to start uh, doing a lot of exercises. In the meantime, you're learning vocabulary and uh, also um, it's going to help you uh, improve with your skills. You need to work a lot on this because um, eventually today is uh, Saturday 24th, June the 24th, 2023. And right now, as of today, I'm not able to, I'm not allowed yet to have a, a live classes, but I think it's going to be a matter of one week, two weeks, perhaps. And I'm, I'm, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to uh, starting live classes, working on this. On this concept so uh, what we're going to, we're going to eventually do uh, during the live classes is to, to start um, doing a lot of exercises conjugating verbs because we need to get uh, proficient in that we need uh, exposure to this process uh, first maybe writing and reading and then producing that um, out loud speaking because that's the idea speaking and understanding so um, Hopefully, uh, you're going to get uh, fluent, uh, you're going to get proficient by working a lot on this. Uh, if you have issues, maybe if you have doubts or trouble doing this, check the video as many times as you need. And if uh, you're still in doubt, please leave a comment. I'll reply as soon as possible. Also, remember, if you like the video, you know what to do. Please share with your friends, in your groups, your social media. And also, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to the channel. That will uh, keep you posted about all the new videos that I'm going to be uh, posting um, uh, on a steady basis. That's going to help you also once we start with the, with the live classes. The, the chat during the live classes is going to be available only for, only for subscribers. That's it. So that's going to be a plus for you. And uh, that's also going to help us keep on growing. Uh, this channel, I started this channel like two, three months ago, but only one month ago, it started to grow. Um, and I'm, I'm gladly surprised because uh, that seems that it seems that um, people like the, 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 the videos and I'm trying to do my best. Remember, I'm not a certified Spanish teacher, um, but I have uh, around 15 years um, of experience teaching English to Spanish speakers. And now I'm trying to do the same, trying to, uh, having understood the, the concepts, the ideas, the structures, the tenses, uh, the natural ways to speak in English, uh, I'm trying to do the same in order to help you learn Spanish. So uh, I'm doing my best, uh, but remember, this is a matter of um, persi persistence, persistence, and uh, perseverance and um, discipline. So uh, you need to start working on this. Um, ask all the questions that you need and I'm going to be here helping as much as I can. So it's been nice having you uh, all uh, during the whole video. Uh, that it's nice knowing that you took the time to watch the whole video. Looking forward to seeing you in next video. So have fun. Take care. Cuídense, nos vemos, gracias por estar aquí con nosotros y espero verlos en un próximo video. Chao.